गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल वेलकम टू द थर्टींथ वीक लास्ट वीक ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इन द क्लास वी हैव द नेक्स्ट वीक ऑनलाइन फॉलोड बाई आवर ओन पेपर्स प्रेजेंटेशन सो एज जॉय वॉज राइटली मैंशनिंग दिस वॉज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पेपर एंड आई वॉज वंडरिंग वाई एम एंड ए वॉज इन अवर एंटरप्रीनियर फाइनेंस क्लास एंड आफ्टर रीडिंग दैट आई कंप्लीटली अंडरस्टूड द आइडिया इज दैट जनरली देर आर मोर पेपर्स एंड लॉर्ड ऑफ रिसर्च वर्क एंड एम एंड एज इन लिस्टेड कंपनीज एरिया but i think this was the first paper i have uh, seen uh, amendes in uh, unlisted companies targeting startups or entrepreneurial finance so other uh, details we are already are aware of it so quickly on uh, uh, amendes uh, it is uh, initiated by the seller or the buyer out of their own interest uh, for uh, synergy values sometimes it may happens uh, through third parties uh, who are professional managers uh, dealing with business combinations uh then uh, the process could be it uh, the deal closes uh, through negotiations uh, between the buyer and the seller through proper platform by themselves in the private places or through uh, some inter intermediaries in a common platform then rumors or leaks uh, there are two different things rumors are the things where the, there is no information but brokers or uh, some analysts or so they try to cook up and try to influence the price of the respective companies at the uh, target company or the acquiring company they try to benefit out of it so actually there is no uh, uh, there is no scope of a business combination between any two companies but they try to cook up something that we can call it as a pure rumor but leak is something which is a, a serious issue where uh, target company and business uh, uh, acquiring company they are working on uh, the business combination but nothing has been finalized but uh, internally or uh, some other associated persons they leak it out that is uh, that has a, a more impact on the business so uh, it, it it may happen that uh, future value post deal value may come down or go up and it may also uh, bring uh, troubles to the acquirer if it is prospect to to acquire the target and he, he, uh, the company may demand a premium price uh, the other way it may also fall down because uh, the investors and other people may or the other stakeholders may react negatively to that and sometimes it may happen so badly that uh, the deal uh, gets abandoned then uh, something on uh, through this paper why information leaks usually the public listed companies have ndas uh, it's an agreement for non disclosure of the uh, of any fact or information or inputs or process related to the uh, uh, merger and acquisition deal uh, i think here uh, uh, i just would like to uh, put a point uh, i think uh, uh, takeover is not considered because that is, that happens by buying and uh, Are acquiring the shares, not just the business uh, acquisition. So this is more of uh, mergers and acquisitions. Uh, so the three major reasons why uh, leaks uh, happen in uh, during uh, or just before the deal uh, gets done, it's a uh, management inability or carelessness uh, uh, to keep it confidential or uh, uh, t- not taking care of the documents or mails or messages. Uh, Uh, and uh, that could be the internal re- major internal reason then sometimes the, uh, it happens randomly without any intention to leak it and uh, uh, the problematic reason could be the intentional leaks where the stakeholders of the uh, acquiring company or the target company they are interested in this information to leak out because they strongly have the desire to uh, make this deal happen because they will benefit out of it on uh, maybe employees the salaries may go up new perks will come organization culture will change positively thinking and negatively uh, if you look at this they may feel they are scared of a new company acquiring their own company they try to leak it out uh, so that uh, it spreads uh, in the market and it gets discounted uh, negatively in the market so like the like these employees it could be suppliers sometimes customers managers anyone could intentionally leak it out uh, for negative reasons or positive reasons from the acquirer side as well as the uh, target company side both
So, the major outcomes of the or impact of the leaks could be the deal doesn't get done. Yeah, it, it doesn't happen. There are two ways. It could be successful or not successful. But um, uh, if it is more uh, uh, unproductive, it results negatively. Then uh, the deal value may go positive or negative, and uh, it it uh, uh, damages employee morale. Yeah, that can also happen. The productivity may be low or come down during the process or post merger. Then damage sales can also happen. Then stock mani manipulation. I think we are uh, talking uh, just now about that. Many analysts. I think uh, recently when. Uh, uh, Exxon was trying to acquire uh, Pioneer. Everyone was wondering whether it was really a, a news or rumor. So price was a little this way and that way. Because th this is not the time for the company to acquire oil industry with the advent of electric cars and so on. But in reality, when uh, the CEO of uh, Exxon, uh, when he finalized that, yeah, we are buying it for $59 billion, then they confirmed that it is not a leak. It is not a rumor. It is real. So these are the major uh, uh, knock-on uh, effects of leaks on the market and uh, uh, externally and uh, on the employees internally. Then rumors are more active and uh, they are productive actually in traders point of view. Uh, some, some people uh, they intentionally create the rumors and uh, try to make it out because uh, rumors are short lived. The traders uh, try to benefit out of it in the intraday trades or uh, buy today, sell tomorrow kind of uh, strategies. Then it's quite common in uh, uh, public listed companies. And the research says that the impact of unintentional rumors is less pronounced than uh, uh, intentional rumors. So intentional rumors are very strong affecting the market uh, capitalization or market value of uh, the target company or the acquiring company. So this study, uh, this paper uh, analyzes and uh, determines the impact of uh, unlisted companies m and rumors or information leaks, rumors or leaks on the deal completion or deal closing propensity. So whether it will happen or not, what is the probability that that gets closed or not? That's the first uh, dimension. The other dimension is what happens to its uh, transaction value. So these, these are the two major areas uh, the paper wants to work on. And uh, I think uh, it is not that easy uh, to uh, do the work, to do the research in, uh, on uh, 68,000 plus companies in 88 uh, countries spread in uh, 18 different industries that was a major challenge and i would love to interact with the authors how they how they did it and so on that was that is a very precious experience to share well, they would have, what, what was the data set from probably uh, i had that so, Ziff, yeah. that would have been Probably from the MDO. And then, the, yeah, most scopes quite easy. So, yeah, Zephyr, I mean, it's just it's a question of how much they, they have, right? So, but Zephyr is good data, really expensive, so that's a problem. Okay. FAU subscribe for that? Mm hmm. Oh, God, no. So, like, we don't have access to that. So, this one would be if, if Jan and Alex are involved, it'd be if the MDO would have access to that. Another is Orbis. Orbis is also very good, very expensive though. So why authors choose uh, uh, only unlisted companies uh, in spite of uh, public listed companies where uh, data is abundant and it is available anytime in terms of the news or the prices or a tick level data is available, publicly available. Uh, but they have chosen this because of uh, these major reasons. So unlisted target uh, leaves limited reasons for rumors. rumors could be there uh, with uh, unlisted companies, but they are not widespread. The outcomes are not widespread and impact is very less com compared to public listed companies. Then rumors may arise uh, unintentionally due to carelessness in the negotiation process. 
Then someone may spread a rumor on purpose to affect the likelihood of transaction, closing and uh, deal value which happens in uh, publicly listed companies again. And uh, the major thing is this uh, study rules out the noise of uh, public stock market where public limited companies uh, uh, value is instantly affected by the rumor or the leak which is spread in the market. But there are some limitations as uh, there is no regulatory uh, requirement to disclose the uh, uh, deal considerations like uh, NDA requirement is there uh, in uh, a listed company. So that is missing here. Then transaction values are not observable, are observable frequently for the sample. This is a major challenge and they have uh, put a lot of models into it uh, to, to do a simulation kind of thing. Because in the listed uh, company, in a, uh, uh, the deal is about a listed, uh, two listed companies, then uh, the value changes every day or every minute uh, in a day. But in the case of uh, unlisted company, the information leak and its impact uh, is very difficult to substantiate because its value is not known, not traded. So th these two are the major demerits or limitations or the disadvantages because of uh, targeting the unlisted firms. Then the framework of this research is first to determine the likelihood of an uh, m and rumor emerging or not. Then uh, allow the scope to estimate the probability of uh, deal consummation. What is the probability? So on a um, scale of 0 to 1 as a binary variable. Then uh, uh, to trace a deal value observability, observability. So to what extent if it is happening, yes, but if it is one, to what extent the value gets influenced by this leak which I mentioned in the first uh, stage and whether it is positive or negative and then to what extent. And control for the, it has a control for the conditional effects on consideration for a rumor, emerging transaction closing and deal value being observed. So this is a model, that's how it was done. Then uh, major challenges, uh, the author says that potential sources of transaction rumors are uh, not measurable, They're difficult to measure, I was saying in the previous slides also, and unobservable. This necessitates the need to model jointly. So emergence of an uh, M&A transaction rumor and its impact on deal closing means yes or not, disclosure of deal value and the deal value itself, positive or negative. These two are put together, modeled in this research. And estimation is also cha challenging as rumors may be spread uh, intentionally or uh, randomly, accidentally. Then uh, to face this uh, challenge, indirect influence uh, methodology is used. which is uh, similar to uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulations, which happens in research methods uh, uh, to um, uh, like any sim simulation based estimation technique, which is based on uh, the requirements like uh, it should be possible to simulate the model. Uh, there should be some, sco some scope or some clue to uh, do the simulation. And a simple auxiliary model needs to exist, which is which should be suitable for maximum likelihood, least squares, or moment-based assessment. So the accuracy is valid, validated via Monte Carlo simulations and identify the model parameters using the empirical data. This is the methodology. So to simplify it, they just uh, narrated how it goes on. So to start with, is there a leak or not? If a leak is there, it is 1. If there is no leak, it is 0. If leak is there, it, it gets closed or not. If it is closed means 1. If it is not closed means 0. Not closed means there is no discussion on valuation. Price doesn't exist. If it is closed, he has given a positive side of the deal closure value with 0.16 uh, premium. Times the PO means the deal agreed value. So that's how they have given. If that happens in the case, if it is uh, 1, means there is a leak. In the other way, if there is no leak, means the binary variable is uh, 0, leak is 0. Then further, if there is no leak, the deal happens or not, closes or not. 
So yes means one, no means zero. So again, if uh, it doesn't close, there is no discussion on valuation. And uh, if it is closed, then again, there should be a price equated in, uh, through simulation. Then the, these are the data sources I was showing you earlier also. Zephyr is the major source to know more about the acquirer and target company in terms of uh, their origin, industry, origin in the sense where they belong to, which country, because we have spread to 88 countries. Then uh, deals closed or not, deal, enterprise value, initial equity of uh, state of the acquirer. In the target, uh, uh, they, they mentioned in the variable as toe hold. Is there any stake of the acquirer in the target company before the negotiation or the before the deal got com completed? Is that a buyout or a kind of equity exchange or not? Then number of acquirers, is that only one or more than one? Is that uh, the deal is rumored or not? Then uh, target company's age, how old is the target company? Size of the target company measured in terms of assets. Then targets uh, HHI. Then they also had the uh, um, data uh, resource from uh, Thomson Reuters and uh, Worldscope. Worldscope is the major source for industry information. They can use the year for the HHI releasing the index. Yeah, they, I mean, it's not the major, I mean, it's, it's used. Okay. So not, not the only one, but generally for uh, the HHI and because in many papers, instead of CRISP or some other sources, uh, I see in uh, Worldscope when they're talking about uh, industry. Yeah. Then the variables I just listed for a little understanding. The dummy variables are uh, the closing, league, type of the acquirer. Type of the acquirer is interesting and has a, a, a good role in this uh, study. Is that an individual? government, a financial acquirer or strategic acquirer and others uh, are also included which are not in this uh, uh, list of four. Then is that a buyout or not? Is that a local deal? Local in the sense acquirer is in the acquirer and target are in the same country. That is, that is the meaning of uh, a local deal. And same industry, both the target and uh, acquirer belonging to the same industry. Then explanatory variables. Uh, uh, these are the uh, kind of regressors which affect uh, the dependent variable leak. Acquirer experience means uh, the age of uh, the acquiring company. Uh, uh, then age, it is the age of the target company. Assets refers to size of the target uh, company. Then HHI uh, refers to the respective industry which uh, acquirer and uh, target company belongs to. Then uh, m and market. Uh, it is a market volume in pre-transaction year as the deal date. The number of acquirers, one or more. Number of sources. Uh, uh, sources for uh, information leak. There could be many. Uh, uh, the paper listed uh, five or six sources. Uh, so number of sources uh, could be one or more than one. So the price is the deal value. Then toe hold, they defined it as the stake of the acquiring company and the target company. Then uh, leak instrument variable is for the rumor leak, which is defined as a number of uh, rumor deals within the total number of deals in the same country and industry as the focal deal over the last uh, 12 quarters preceding it. So three years. So. some statistical information or just numbers. In the first column, we have uh, the deal information not leaked, deal information leaked. And in the first row, we have deal closed and the deal not closed. And uh, when you look at that, uh, when the information is not leaked, the closed deals were 38,627. Uh, uh, and not closed were 11,977. And when the information leaks, you can see the number is uh, 6,000, 
63 and uh, leak diesel 11377 so again it is uh, 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 compared as a proportion to the totals in the third and fourth columns and in the last row also and there uh, uh, the study presented uh, uh, good information about the deals rumors and uh, uh, leaks for the period from 1997 to 2007 year wise and uh, first two columns are the year and number of uh, deals and the second segment you can see the closed out of for example 97 out of 82 uh, closed were 81, not closed were 1 and leaked were 6, not leaked were uh, 76. So apart from the segments from 97 to 99 and uh, 2000 to 2017, there is no clear trend. They are randomly, uh, they, we can't say uh, they are increasing or decreasing kind of trends. They are randomly distributed. Then industry pattern, uh, again the same numbers are distributed among the industries starting from chemicals to uh, wood, co uh, cork and paper. But interestingly, the other services uh, was huge. Uh, I think uh, I was excited what were those services were. That, that was around 19,074 out of 68,044. Uh, uh, so, That was not mentioned. <laughs> I think software is missing here. <laughs> yeah. Technology, IT, and yeah, that's missing here. Oh, no, I, mean, I mean, it's impossible that it wouldn't have been software or IT. Oh, no, I they lumped it into other services. They, yeah. If they separated it, it wouldn't work out. Yeah, I couldn't find anywhere. I just gone through. Yeah, there's a reason. It's impossible for for industry pattern to not include IT. Okay. So that means what would have happened was if they separated IT from other services, maybe it it seems it could there could be maybe it's it's uh, I think it's it'd be overweighted, wouldn't it? It just okay. seems like it because it's. Really, so maybe that's why if you take IT, so what they did is they lumped it as other services mm -hmm. instead of overweighting it for one specific, then they'll raise, they'll raise other questions. Okay. Because it's, it's, I mean, usually other is a small number. <laughs> this is, this is like five, like this is, it seems like there, there must be four or five. Yeah. High industry, because it, the highest tier is 9,000, other mm. services is 19. Uh, that's a bit um, crazy. So I think they would have, it must have been overweighted in one way or another, but it's lumped in other. I suspect. Because it's a bit suspicious. Did they use some. What's the classification here? Is it from a French or. This is that the. Or they did it themselves. Yeah, uh, they did it themselves based on uh, uh, WorldScope HHI. Yeah, the HHI, yeah. So they just, so, so that's what I mean, right? So, so if, let's say, let's assume IT. Because, I mean, they say post and telecom, let's say, software or something. Software would be high. Yeah, but it, it worked out for them, but it's always <laughs> a question of it's impossible for other services to be so large. Yeah. I think, again, within that, uh, within the industry distribution also, there is a... Uh, Apart from the other, which has uh, eight numbers, I think the rest of them are around 60. It is not too small or too large. Kind. <clears throat> then uh, sources of leaks, uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, it, uh, it was uh, based on the acquirer type, who leaked the information, uh, they have uh, categorized. So when they had 17,440 leaks, which I had been showing in the ta previous tables also, 
it was categorized uh, into different sources of leaks uh, based on the types of acquirer strategic acquirer financial acquirer and unspecified so i think they are in the descending order strategic acquirer had, was the source for most of the leaks which is 9434 more than 50% of the leaks are from uh, strategic acquirer quite interesting so they they are acquiring the target company for a strategy and they themselves are the source of uh, the information that is uh, one segment then based on the leaks by information side uh, again they have categories of unspecified acquirer other vendor target and none uh, so again here unspecified had more sources as a uh, uh, more information sources in the leak side but it makes sense for the strategic acquirers to want to be or or benefit from the leak because it's a strategic of acquisition hmm. and especially if you're looking at acquisition could be based on cash or stock right uh. so if the leak is positive or the leak other positive or negative it's just a leak to say it's a strategy that the acquirer is oh. So therefore, they need to their own stock price. Okay, okay. So therefore, then the, the, the acquisition oh. is cheaper, right? So it, it, it's, it's logical. Um, okay. For, I mean, for, for both strategic and financial. For governments, it doesn't... <laughs> I, mean, I think it's uh, hardly at 1%. <laughs> Gone. Okay. Uh, so uh, the then... So these are the variables... Uh, uh like i was explaining the the source of data for what data they are uh, accessing uh, different uh, data sources so this is the list of uh, the variables the age age of the target company assets the size of the target company hhi the industry which which they belong to to hold the acquirer stake in the uh, target company before the deal the number of acquirers one or more acquirer experience amd market a leak instrument va uh, variable price the deal value and number of sources and i, I think i already uh, listed uh, the list of uh, variables dummy variables three were listed in the papers table buyout local deal and uh, same industry then uh, this is the uh, regression table it has uh, with the leak as the dependent variable it has many other sources so here uh, the first column recognizes the flag for rumor transactions on several covariates industry and country fixed defects it reveals uh, that the leak iv instrument uh, describing the historic emergence of uh, transaction rumors strongly and statistically significantly affecting the current uh, uh, rumor likelihood the model also shows that amd transaction rumors uh, intensify intensity increases with the larger targets uh, so th that's the reason uh, asset is re assets relationship is positive uh, means uh, uh, larger the uh, target company's value more is the intensity sorry intensity this is the same one extended with uh, the source of leak by leak by acquirer leak by target leak by vendor leak by others and uh, leak by unspecified so finally the findings of the study state that amd rumors are deal breakers for sure as 26.11% of the transactions were rumored before their announcement or failure and 34% ultimately failed the deal didn't get closed and rumored but closed deals have higher transaction values 16% more than more com compared to the non leaked values so it is a it could be the reason that intentionally someone has leaked that for a higher price of the or the deal higher deal value of the uh, transaction the the combined economic impact of uh, about 2 uh, is strongly negative 
the rumors destroy about 32.42% of the transaction values. So leaks are so dangerous with the unlisted companies. And finally, the study reveals a trade-off among uh, m and uh, deal partners. So it, it is a win-win situation kind of thing. The target company wants more price, acquiring company wants to have a cheaper price. So accordingly, they may have some uh, uh, plans to leak out the information kind of thing, but there will be a trade-off. So the seller leaks for a premium price at the cost of an unsuccessful deal. So that's costly. They, they may trade for uh, uh, low price, this, uh, sorry, uh, premium price, high price, but at the same time, there is a risk that the deal may not happen. So sellers have to be careful. At the same time, buyer leaks for a low price at the cost of an unsuccessful deal. So that there should be a trade-off. Even others, uh, competitors, other stakeholders like competitors, managers, media, politicians, shareholders, stakeholders, vendors, and others for individual motives, they also have that trade-off. So politicians here, maybe in case of a public sector company, uh, when the government owns uh, a company in a country, maybe their uh, politician's role is there. That's how, that's how I felt. It's hard to say that because it depends on what, what they as politicians, right? So if some guy on Congress yeah, has a leak, I mean, does he have, have any control about government-owned entities? So as a politician, it's, it's very hard to, to really identify. And some countries, it's, it's more centralized. Okay. So like if, if a Chinese politician says something, then, then they know it's linked to a state-owned entity. But if some guy from Virginia <laughs> something like in the U.S., it doesn't really matter. But one thing that it, be, it would have been interesting if they were able to look at the deal closure, to what extent it was, how if the deal was structured. Maybe not in all countries, but let's say in the U.S., right? Let's say if you look at whether it's, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a swap, whether, oh. it's, you know, whether it's an equity swap, whether it is, it is cash, whether, I mean, they have leverage buyouts, but leverage buyouts is very different because that just means that they are taking on debt, right? So it's not the same as the- Cash or so Yeah, so, so cash versus, versus equity, because then that would identify the motivation of the buyer and the seller because, you know, the leak, how it affects uh, the term structure. But they don't have the data here, but that'd be interesting to see. Okay. But yeah, so, I mean, and, and, we, and one of the things uh, that uh, this, this paper is interesting, yeah, Zephyr data, many, many papers use Zephyr or Volcom, so uh, the data is relatively easy to get, uh, but here I think it's the idea of the leaks versus a lot of, there's a lot of studies on analyst okay. uh, recommendations here, it's unofficial information trickling down to the market, uh, especially, and so from an entrepreneurial perspective, that's why it's, it's, it straddles both because it's quite unique in their approach where they're using rumors and and, so, and there's rumors, the difference between rumors and leaks, right? But yet at the same time, in, in, a, in a perfect market, this is, this is, this would this be priced in or is it something that it's relatively new for us to consider? Uh, and, and it's, and it's again, interesting because you don't have the, you, you, you remove the market from the, from the issue uh, because it's, it's, it's private company, it's not publicly listed company. Because publicly listed company, the problem is there's the, the leaks are, where, how does it come, you know, it comes from multiple sources, analysts and all that. Mm -hmm. Here, there's no analyst coverage, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you very Thank much. you.